morning, good morning, Hawaii. Have we got a very special show for you today. I have some more precious people who love the Lord and they're called by God to do work here in the island that maybe you don't know anything about. Maybe it's the first time you've ever heard Common Grace. And Jay Jarden is here to talk about his vision and dream in Common Grace. I love that name. And he'll explain to you what that means. And we have again with us Dr. Bruce Wong. We always have good health tips with him. He just speaks out of his heart what God has shown him in his profession. And I like to call him a pastor because anyone who takes care of other people's hearts and cares about their hearts, physically or mentally or spiritually, whatever, is a pastor. And I have my lovely Karen Miyashiro this morning with us. And she is a pastor, lady pastor. So we have gentlemen pastors, lady pastor. And she and I are going to talk about a very exciting time. In fact, that's, uh, and then I have, I must let you know, lady prophetess Deborah Barbour. And she's going to be dancing songs with us. And every Tuesday night at the Prophetic Cafe, she's down there with me prophesying along with Pastor uh, Willie and with Sunshine, and it's Prophet Willie, really. And so we kind of have a nice little prophetic meeting down there, and it's really fun time of comforting. I call it prophetic comfort and exhortation and edification. As the scripture says, that's what prophets do most of the time, or they should do. I know I'm not the one that wears a sign that says, repent, you're going to hell. I'm not that kind of a prophet. You can tell kind of, yeah. But I am the one that says, repent and love the Lord, and he'll forgive you your sins, and you can go to heaven with us. And we're not the only ones going to heaven. Anyone who has Christ in their heart all over the world is going to heaven. Automatic, guys. Automatic. No charge. Free gift of God. The inheritance of being a child of God and having your spirit connected up with God. And if you're connected with God, then you're connected with his son, Jesus. And then you're connected with the Holy Spirit who gives you wisdom. And then you have the anointing, which isn't really yours, it's his. And then you can give God all the glory for it. And as I've always said, good morning, dear heart. As I've always said, I'm just an ordinary woman that the power of God sometimes flows through. Yeah? And I think that it is really foolish to try to take credit for the power of God. Uh, he doesn't go much for that. He didn't really like Satan doing that. Uh, Satan, you know, thought he was bigger than God. He says, I will ascend, and I'll be bigger than God. And I think God just kicked him out of heaven and said, uh, enough of that now. And sad part is many of his angels went with him, and they're the fallen angels. And so God had to create a hell for them. And he didn't really create that place for people. I want you to know that. My main thing is I don't want you going to hell. It's a bad place. It's without God. It's without love. It's a place without light. It's all dark. And all the sins that tormented you and all the addictions, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but somebody needs to hear it. All the addictions that you had down here will be 10 times worse down there, but you will not be able to fulfill them. If you had to have a drug, you can't have it, but you'll have the thirst and the, the thirst for the alcohol and the desire for the drug, but you won't be able to satisfy that. If you like to gossip, that's all you hear down there is gossip, gossip, gossip. It is bad news. Hell is bad news. And sometimes, you know, I'm always talking about heaven and heavenly things because I love the kingdom of heaven. I want to go there. I want to be with people who have pure hearts and love God and want to talk about Jesus and not just gossip. Yeah? And if we're not careful, if we stay with those type of people that are continually being critical, and judgmental and gossiping, we begin to do that. It's kind of like a yawn. If you see someone yawn, you yawn with them. Yeah, I know I do. So sin is easy to catch if you're not careful. And so we have to have the Holy Spirit, which is our teacher, to show us, help us with that self-control and the temp temperance, they call it. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who brings forth the fruits of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, goodness, kindness, and all that good stuff. 
but the end one is temperance, which means self-control. And I really don't know a lot about that. I try, I try, but without the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't get any place. He and the Holy Spirit are the greatest helpers I have. And they're there to bring me through the joy, the ecstasy, and they're there to bring me through the agony of life. Dear one, if you don't know Jesus, it's about time you met him. He's the best friend you'll ever have. He'll never leave you. He'll never talk about you behind your back except to the Lord, good stuff. It's the enemy, the devil, that talks behind your back and talks to the Lord and accuses you and says, oh, that Phyllis down there, she's no good. Can't you see what she's doing, all that bad stuff? He's the accuser, accuser of the brethren and the women, the sistren, okay? But the Lord says, no, I know her and I know her heart. And she's always sorry when she sinned against the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want to be, folks walking in the spirit of the Lord, talking, walking, speaking, acting, dealing truly as the Holy Spirit helps us. And I wasn't going to do this because I've got my three guests and some beautiful dancing today. So that had to be the Holy Spirit, all right? And good morning, my precious good friend. Good morning. It's been such a pleasure meeting you and knowing you, and I've only known you uh, maybe less than a year. Mm -hmm. But I've seen you at all of the meetings with the women. You and Lynn are the head of the uh, Empowering the Women or yes. Empowering the Saints. Yes. And we've got exciting news today, right? Get yes, excited, girl. I we've am. got excited news. <laughs> I am excited. I am <laughs> excited. excited. <laughs> and what it is is we've got on October 21st yes. a powerful Amen. ministry to the women of God. Yes. I call it, I'm going to be there teaching teaching the ladies how to fly into their ministries. Amen. And I'll talk a little story about what a prophetess is and what she isn't. That she has to be a holy, uh, listening to the Holy Spirit, not Amen. the unholy spirits. Amen. Psychics listen to the unholy spirit. And if you're messing with medium psychics, warlocks, and any of those things, don't. Because you're going to get a lot of bad spirits. Amen. But if you're listening to apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, you're going to get a lot of good stuff Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're here to announce what? Our we have our conference coming up in October. As you know, we always have our conferences in October. And um, Island Women Empowered by God is so excited this year because, as you had mentioned, with uh, the prophets and teachers and preachers and, and everyone else, we will have the fivefold ministry represented at our, our conference this year. It's going to be on October 21st. And we're excited. We're going to be at the Blaisdell Center uh, with it. the Peacocky Room. Oh, yeah, that the Peacocky Room right. this year. This year. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into more of that about next year. Yeah. But we'll be having, and let me just uh, mention to you who our speakers will be. We're so excited. We have a Lady Pastor Drusilla Lewis from Pacific Revival Center. She is a lovely, lovely lady. Amen. And she will have a teaching. Each one of these women have a unique teaching, something yes. you maybe have not heard before, yeah. and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And you need to learn how to grow with them and become who God wants you to be as Amen. a woman minister. Amen. Go for it, girl. And of course, our, our precious lady prophetess, Phyllis, will be with us, and we're excited to have her this year. We also have Lady Pastor Helen Badwa. She's from, um, she has her own ministry, Living Trinity Hawaii, and the Way of Salvation Church is where she's from. And of course, everyone has heard of uh, Lady Pastor Virginia Domlegan with the prayer watch that she has. And uh, she comes from the prayer center of the Pacific in Pearl City. And she's always looking for intercessors. So please, please give her a call. But she has an awesome ministry. If you have not heard her speak, you need to be there. Um, also, Lady Pastor Yvonne Solis, and she has uh, a ministry called uh, My Brother's Keeper, and uh, she comes out of Shield of Faith. And these are such wonderful women who have such powerful ministries. And our, the title of this year's conference is called Empowering the Saints, and it comes from Ephesians 6, 12 to 16. But we just want to mention to you also that this is through a vision that has been given to our ministry, Island Women Empowered by God, and it's a path that we're taking towards 2007. Uh, we started off this year in June with our workshop, and it was such an awesome time with all the women. 
and this was starting off the, the vision of the joyful journey with God and taking us through. And that's you with Lady Lynn? Yes. See, I'm going to call all of our women ladies because then we have to act like ladies. Amen. Watch out. Amen. And she and uh, other women are with you. Are you. Have you got quite a group of women that are helping out, I hope? Uh, well, we have some, but we could use more. <laughs> we can always use more. You know, uh, God's work is never done, uh, you know, until we go home with Him. And until then, we will, see, we, there's a number that they'll be posting. Uh, it's 398 Obey. And if any one of you would like to be involved with our ministry in getting involved in our conferences and our workshops, uh, we, we most encourage you to call and, and find out more information about it. And our if ministry. they call before October 1st, you get a little bit of a a deal right with bringing 10 people you get it a little cheaper right I can't put the cost on here because it goes on to Alelo and I can't put costs on books <laughs> and things and conferences but we have we have a, a, an exciting day plan yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, every woman needs to know her destiny in the Lord okay. we've had our destiny in a career we've had our destiny getting married we had children, a house, a dog, a cat, cars, <laughs> all that, okay? And going through the teenagers, that was a tough one. And helping the husband to be the great man of God in the mm -hmm. world and the guy in the gates, you know, like mm -hmm. my husband. He was with Gentry for 40 years mm -hmm. and he was a, hi honey, he was a, <laughs> he was a developer and built 10,000 homes in the islands. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys didn't know that. It's about time I said something about my dear <laughs> husband. And it is in that that we are helping, standing beside our husbands, mm -hmm. not behind them, not in front of them, but beside them, mm -hmm. to move on in to be mm -hmm. the great man of God, the prophet, the king, and the priest of the house. The high priest is Jesus. I guess the low priest is the husband, but the high priest, okay. <laughs> and that makes me a priestess, I was Amen. saying too. Karen, you need to know that you're called for more than just childbearing and husband bearing, all right? Mm -hmm. You're called to do a work for the Lord. And bringing those children is the greatest call they've had, mm -hmm. really. Bringing and nurturing up your children when they're young and in nurturing them in the Lord and getting them started. I often didn't catch the gifts that they had like I should have and encourage that. My husband encouraged college and go on and do all that, and they did all that. But I should have encouraged the giftings that I saw more but they're still doing it now. Amen. But I say that, Karen, because I want the women to do those things. You have that. But you also have, me, myself, and I, a ministry that God called you to before the foundation of the earth. And he wants you to learn. It's a dream in your heart. And even, even though I was married, I had, uh, in my home, ministered around the table. And the kids would come, and they'd need something. I'd take care of it and before my husband came home so that it all worked together and he got the attention he needed and the people who were around the table got the attention they needed and I got the experience that I needed Karen in learning how to prophesy and respond to people's mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. now there's more for women and I want you to know there will be women apostles Think of Mother Teresa. She definitely was an apostle. Mm -hmm. An apostle is only one who starts a new work in the Lord. There will be women prophetesses coming out of the woodwork, like I have come out of the closet, you know? Okay. There will be women evangelists, teachers, and pastors. Mm -hmm. We know about them, but we don't know about the apostles mm -hmm. and the prophetesses mm -hmm. and what they're all about and who they are, and it really doesn't matter who we are. What matters is that we're doing what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Every man and woman, before they were born, had a destiny in God, had something that God had called them to do that they could succeed in. Now, the Lord says, Karen, that God says, I will make you fit to share in the inheritance of the good things of God. So God helps to make us fit to share in those things. And Jesus said, I consecrate myself to finish you off. Now that doesn't mean to polish you off or kill you. It means to polish you off. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. So ladies, you have a call in your life. Many of you are called to be apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. And you've said, oh, 
but this is a man's world and I can't do that. You can do it if you do it with the right spirit. It's called a sweet spirit of submission, sweet submission to the Lord first, and the husband was my next sweet submission to. Don't grit your teeth and say sweet submission. You gotta say sweet submission. You submit unto him as unto the Lord in a nice way. I know that's a hard word, but that's what the Lord told me at one time. If I could submit to my husband in a nice way, I could submit the right way to the Lord. That's big, I know. If he's slapping you around, though, girls, I don't say you had to submit to that, all right? God has a plan for your life that's above and beyond when you are all through taking care of your kids. You don't run out ministering first. You take care of your children, all right? Don't do the old Pentecostal way. I'm called of God, and they go out minister, and leave the kids at home and the husband at home to fend for themselves. That's not scriptural, all right? So anyway, well, time will come where you can minister and be all that God wants you to be, and that's what I'm going to try to teach you and help you to learn how to fly in the Lord. But you got to get rid of a lot of baggage first. But anyway, that's that. And what are you looking for? I'm looking forward to Yvonne Cruz. Oh, yes, Yvonne Solis. Because I'm Solis, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when I knew her way back right, when. Right, when she was a crew. And she just had lost her husband, mm -hmm. and, and she, you know, all these people, all these women have a different story and it will lift your faith mm -hmm. and encourage you and you can say, I can do it. If she did it, mm -hmm. I can do it. Yeah. That's what this comes If she's a good about. wife, I can be a good wife. Yes. If, if she's a good mom, I can be a good mom in Christ. Yes. Okay. Outside of Christ, nah, it's pretty hard. Yes. Anyway, I've got to move on because we've got lovely people here today and my dear Deborah, Lady Prophetess Deborah, she's going to be doing I call him Lord Ehula for you. Enjoy. Okay, Hilo. This one is for all of you.
Aloha, God bless. So beautiful. You know, Deborah has a ministry, international dance ministry. She just came back from Japan, teaching them over there how to dance. And now she's going to do a Native American song called Jesus is Good Medicine. And boy, do I know he's good medicine. Because laughter and joy is like good medicine. Heals the heart and the spirit and the broken bone. Here we are. God or
I say Jesus is a good medicine, whatever that was in the bottom there, Gararumpa. Jesus is the best medicine. If you didn't get that, and if you didn't get the joy of it, I want to tell you, Jesus is the best healer I know. He's a healer of the heart, the soul, the spirit, the body, the mind, every which way. And I am so happy to have Dr. Bruce Wong with me today. And I want to tell you what was wrong with me, doctor, is right with me now. Because I had about four years ago uh, lumps in my breast, cancer. And I just knew that I had to do something about it. And of course, the doctors will tell you what to do. And I did. I had just lumpectomy after lumpectomy after lumpectomy. And I did not. I don't say you all have to go the way I did, but I did not take the radiation, and I did not take the chemotherapy, and I opted for quality of life, they call it, prayer and care by eating the right foods. And it works because Friday, last Friday, I got up completely clean. I am awesome. cancerless, let's put it, whatever. And if you've ever had that big C scare you, Big C Jesus Christ, Christ, he's bigger than that little tiny C cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, God wants you to live so that you can proclaim his love and his joy and his peace, and you can do more work for the Lord. Yes. And you can lose weight too and do that, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, you're a man that's kind of hands-on ministry and your heart is hands-on ministry too. Talk story with me about what you've been doing. What's some good things that have happened in your life? Well. Every day is uh, just awesome because God's hands over my life and the practice. Yes. So people he brings to the office, you know, our job is just to, like you said, minister to them, mind, body, soul, their heart, of course. And, um, and we, when they listen, they prosper, right? Yes, they do. But it isn't just listening, it's applying that word, isn't uh -huh. it? Yeah, knowledge. The yes. knowledge that you give them about eating and mm -hmm. this and that and mm -hmm. all those good things. Yes. We have to apply it. That's correct. If on, you don't apply it, God doesn't supply it. Uh -huh. On Tuesday evenings, as a matter of fact, that's when we do our teaching. So it's like a, a pastor doing his message on Sunday. We do ours on Tuesday, but it's a health workshop every week. So we're right in the middle of our nutrition series, by the way. Good. And uh, next week is uh, essential supplements and nutrients, meaning essential, meaning if you don't take them, your body cannot be healthy. Right, and I do that too. You got to take, take the right ones. I a lot of vitamins. Though. People are so shocked that I can take five or ten gloop in my orange juice, <laughs> and it's down. Mm -hmm. And a little bit B12 too. I know that God wants us to be healthy, to do yes. His work, to be a good wife, mm -hmm. to be a good minister, a good mother, whatever it is, and to live. Yes, live abundantly. And that's what you're teaching people. Yes. He says Jesus said, "I didn't come that you just might have life, but that more abundant life." Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. where you work, right? Mm -hmm. In that abundant life. Yes, that is correct. Come on, tell me something about somebody that was good. You don't, you don't, I don't mind if you brag. Tell me something, because <laughs> you're bragging about the Lord. Sure. Well, you know, there's people every day, you know, that I'm have scared. different conditions, whether it be a heart condition, whether it be cancer, whether it be an immune system challenge, whether it be low energy, whether it be, you know, depression or anxiety. And, uh, you know, our job is to find out what the cause is, because that's unfortunately what most uh, physicians or doctors don't do is get to the reason why they uh, prescribe medicine or a treatment that uh, allows the symptoms to get better but then in time the problem comes back even worse because the true cause is not addressed so so you kind of give a pre what do they call it medic uh, something before preventative medicine you you right it's called it's prevent. called well it's called wellness we don't like people oh. to get to the point where they have a condition but the same principles apply to staying well to getting well. You know, you have to do everything regarding, um, I guess, allowing each cell in the body to go towards health because we're either going in one or two directions God towards or away heal, from it at any God, given time. God can heal me of cancer, but if I don't eat right, right, it could come back. Yes, I, and, and I've seen that too in the church where people have gotten, 
you know, healing through prayer, and then the next year they die from another condition. So they have not changed their ways. Because, you know, God has placed natural laws. It's impossible for somebody to live long and healthy if they don't eat properly or innately, what we call it. But it's so hard, exercise. you know, with all the toxics going on, running mm -hmm. around oh, in yes. our bodies and trying to get them out. And it's so hard to exercise. And it's so hard to keep my hand down here from eating more food. Mm -hmm. And when my stomach says it's enough, you know, and the Lord says, that's enough, dear, I just keep going. You know, it's what we call lack of willpower. <laughs> and you just have to will to will to do the will of God, don't you? Well. Deuteronomy 3019 comes to mind. Choose life or death with every bite. <laughs> wow, yeah, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, I found that doctors didn't have good diets too. They were not taught way back nutrition, in yeah. my uh, age, Victoria, you know, the dinosaur <laughs> Four hours age. of nutrition is what to... Uh, they don't understand, medical. yeah, that no. nutrition is, works hand in hand with medication. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's necessary. And there are good doctors, and I thank mm -hmm. God for them. Yes. But I don't always listen to the scare thing, you know, that you're going to have this cancer forever and that kind of thing like that. You can make your heart more well by eating better. You can make your eyes and different things, you know, I know. But anyway, go ahead. I'm not supposed to be doing you. You're no, no, supposed to be you're. doing <laughs> well, the, the thing is, too, is yeah, when you do seek any help or advice, especially with re regards to your health, you should never let the seed of somebody speaking death into you become a reality because if somebody tells you you know you're going to have two weeks to live because you scary. have blank disease so you will you so. believe them because they're a doctor and they're an authority and you forgot that jesus christ is an authority exactly. over your body he came for us for i our found health. that if i listen to my body mm -hmm. and the lord yes he said <laughs> that's not good don't do that mm -hmm. And you know your body better than anybody else. That is correct. But I would say that I like knowing you because you know our bodies too and what is good mm -hmm. and what is right yeah. and what will keep us in health. All right. Our core principle is around three things, is eating, moving, and thinking well. But you have to do those three things for a period of time at the same time in order to be in a state of what's called wellness. Eating, moving, moving exercising, and thinking well. Mm -hmm. and thinking well. Yeah, most people don't know that exercise is not just something to do to get fit it's an essential nutrient meaning if you don't exercise daily you went towards unhealthiness sickness and death yeah. I heard that even little doggies need to be exercised yeah. and that they're much better companions if they're exercised and walked around yeah, a little exactly. bit well, and not just sitting around watching TV <laughs> the dogs don't watch TV do they uh, anyway with their master sometimes <laughs> yeah, that's true uh -huh. that's true yeah. so you have the pleasure of seeing people take your advice mm -hmm. which is from the Lord you work it with the Lord and then watch them blossom and bloom and live yes and that's what it's all about, isn't it? And that's what it's all about, serving others. Yes. That makes your heart happy. Mm -hmm. it certainly does. And your office is wonderful, and you let us have a meeting in your office at one time, mm -hmm. and I thank you for that. Oh, you yeah. know, the uh, Hawaiian Dream Center, mm -hmm. we came in, and, and the atmosphere is so blessed. Mm -hmm. It's like the blessing that I felt when the prophetess Deborah was dancing. Could you feel that blessing that awesome. coming through? From the very first dance in the hula, which was different, to the Indian. I, I went down to New Mexico, Deborah, when I was 18. I was with a mission group, a Christian, and I saw the Indians dancing down there, and they were so regal. The young men danced so regally, they were so proud. But they didn't have God. And to have pride without God is not always good, but I found a lot of the Indians did have God in a way and a spirit that was very sweet and different than ours and especially today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, what would you say to the audience now to, to do what would be the first thing if they're feeling blue and they're down a lot of people are in the hospital actually watching us too mm -hmm. what would you say take heart and what start make a new start yeah I, I would first if, if you are in a dire need of some miracle definitely to call on Jesus or have somebody pray for you, prophetess or prophet, and... Um, or the elders of the church. Elders of the church. Definitely start thinking health, though. You can visualize yourself healthy. That's one of the thought processes of the human mind, that we create new neurosynapses to create physical manifestations of healthy cells, and that's 
Uh, again, another important thing is to think well and to not let the cares of this world, if you will, we should slam them on Jesus, we not let the cares of this world allow us to get sick. Yeah, that's one thing. And then, you know, for those of you who are able to, is to uh, call the number and come see us. And That's a good one. <laughs> come to our workshops and participate with things of health because, you know, unfortunately, most people don't until it's kind of late. So. But I remember seeing you way back when, uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, because I've been hanging around here a while. <laughs> and uh, I, you were giving lessons then on how ice cream was really, was it you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's ice right. cream was really bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Just like Coke is bad. And uh, Dr. Judy says that, that the soda pop takes, I don't know how many days for that to get out of your system. Uh, the corrosion and the sugar and the uh, all mm -hmm. of the junk that we love to put into the body and the body says what are you doing to me you're killing me I found that fresh vegetables and fruits if you just steam them a little bit I'm not fruits but fresh, fresh vegetables are really tasty mm -hmm. I really enjoy them yeah. even my dog enjoys them mm -hmm. he loves asparagus so cauliflower, mine. broccoli, <laughs> broccoli, carrots. Uh -huh. I know it's people food, mm -hmm. but it's good people food if you don't have butter, salt, and pepper on them. Well, the reason why they like them, as the reason we do, is because that's what innately we were designed to eat. You know, ice cream and soda pop, those weren't around, you know, and 70, don't give 100 a dog years chocolate, ago. Right? It's not meant to be eaten. Somebody told me don't give a dog chocolate, it'll kill him. That's not innate for a dog. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, it's they okay we can have a little bit of dark chocolate, right? Well, again. a little bit of dark, dark chocolate, <laughs> little, little bit, little bit. You won't even give me a little bit. Okay, well, it's not that's high. all right. All right, <laughs> you wouldn't do it. Right, right. Uh, every once in a while, I come out with coffee is good for you. You know, then it's bad for you. Then it's good for you. Eggs are good for you. They're bad for you. I was back with Adele Davis. She was my Bible. In nineteen, what? Okay. <laughs> and uh, 50 something when I had my children and so I boiled the water with the parsley with the uh, celery tops and everything and gave it to my kittens with the orange juice separately and people thought oh boy she is really a fanatic but my mother was a health nut and she overcame the same thing I had with prayer and care mm -hmm. and lived to be 84 so I expect to live to be 84 okay and I'll be in my so. rocking chair prophesying to people. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to live another 40 years, do you? I have to live another because I've got a great vision ahead <laughs> in the Hawaiian Dream Center, and I'm going to be building a, the Ramia Center for my husband in his honor. And so I have to live. I have to live to fulfill the call that God's given me on my heart since a little girl. And see, people do get calls, but they don't listen. But the Lord will continue to bring a good man step back. And you gotta live, Jay. You gotta live, honey. You got lots of, excuse me, I call everybody honey and sweetheart. Great. You gotta live, because you know, I'm an old lady, I can do that. Uh, you got to live to give God the glory. You know, when you get fat and you get old and you, around, that doesn't give God any glory. I don't mean fat, fluffy, all right. When you get fluffy, <laughs> you don't give God the glory and you don't live long enough to end the story. You've got to have a glory story when you go home and say, Lord, I did the best I knew how to with your help. So if you're giving them how to and they don't do it, then it's not your fault. That's correct. There's not too many patients, however, who hang around me long enough that don't change, though. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> we'll go down to see Dr. Wong. Thank you. And you'll sing another song with Dr. Wong. You know, Amen. we have our swan song. We're not ducks. I tell the ladies, we're not ducks and we're not chickens. We're swans. All right. But we may look different when we're first, you know, we don't know if we're a duck or a swan when we're first <laughs> born. And everybody kids us, maybe, you know. But sooner or later, we get a long neck and we look like a swan and we start to fly away and we start to fly the good flight Amen. and fight the good fight in the Lord and what is your tip for today before we go into Jay that would be to choose life with every thought whether it be well, a mental thought tell us how that it goes be choosing to not watch TV so you can wake up tomorrow morning and work out just a little bit five minutes is all that's required to start your journey and also with what you eat too, especially you mothers. 
uh, you are literally seeding into the future of your children with how you're eating and what you're preparing for them. So we shouldn't give in to the fact that Johnny or you know, little uh, daughter wants something that tastes sweet and put a whole lot, lot of sugar to please her, knowing that at the same time we're killing, killing her. So we have to be wise with those decisions and just explain to children that way because my little, little girl is, is so intelligent with health that she teaches her friends what's right to eat and what's not to eat. She's only three, so she's lived that way. And you know, doctor, they start that by, I did anyway, put the cauliflower on the plate and don't make them eat it all, just one bite at a time. And then they get used to it next time, one bite now, mm -hmm. and they get used to it. And then pretty soon, you know, that's not so bad. The only thing mm -hmm. mine didn't like was mushrooms. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's when great. you start them and you don't just shove it down there, you know, no broccoli bars, please, or <laughs> <laughs> if there are such a thing, all right. But I remember this gal, they were talking on TV about how she had this big ball workout. They have this big ball, they roll around. Is that for 20 minutes every morning? First she has prayer with the Lord and worship, then she rolls around with the ball 20 minutes every morning. And they say that's good, huh? We have a class every Wednesday night at the office for people, too. To roll around with a ball? Physio ball. Well, not to roll around with it, to do some specific <laughs> exercise. <laughs> but some I people think. actually do roll around when they first come. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get the ball rolling, right? Yes. We yes. got to get the ball rolling. Okay. And I love having you here. Thank you. Is there I anything else here. you want to say with your heart before I get started with uh, Jay? Well, like you said, you know, a adding things, adding healthy things to your life instead of taking something that you really like away is the better mindset because the human mind doesn't work well with deprivation. Yeah. So add good things and slowly the unhealthy things will leave your life. Right. It's like adding good thoughts yes. of heaven to you. Uh, also having a good sense of humor. Oh, that's wonderful. The Lord has a big sense of humor, mm -hmm. how he loves all mm -hmm. of us no matter what we do, yes. you know. He always laughs with us, not mm -hmm. at us, <laughs> I don't think, but he laughs Sometimes with us. Sometimes he laughs at us because <laughs> we laugh at ourselves, you know. Yeah, that's okay. Uh -huh. That's okay. Thank you so much, oh, dear heart. God you. love you. Thank you come again and good morning Jay Jarden good morning, tell me something about this common grace is uncommon grace really God uh, gives yeah. us uncommon grace yes he does uh, may I be a little egocentric and you say something be. about myself please before do I talk about common grace because please do there was something about your dance Deborah that really gave me memories that I haven't had in so many years I was born in New Mexico I have a little bit of Native American in me, I grew up in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And so I, a memory came back to me very vividly that has a lot to do with common grace and what we're trying to do for children. Can I just share that You're with you? You're in the right place this morning, common right, grace. Right. Go for it. <laughs> well, I think I was seven years old, sitting in the back seat of our family car. We were just zooming down the road. And sitting next to me was Clady Carrier, who who was the woman who helped our family with the house and cooking and spent time with me and I loved her like I loved my own mom. She was Native American, actually she was from New Orleans, Cajun, a little French, a little African American. She yeah. was a big, a big mixture and she was a big woman and she loved me hugely. <laughs> Talk about grace. Children need a lot of grace okay. and encouragement. And I, I just got that memory for the first time in years, I, actually while you were dancing, that I was sitting in the car, we're going down the highway, and there was a man hitchhiking. So I called up to my dad, I said, Daddy, that man needs a ride. And my father leaned back and said, perhaps wisely, we do not pick up hitchhikers. And I said, yeah, but we have room for him in our car and he needs a ride. And my father just shook his head and kept driving. Well, I started to cry. I felt sorry for the fellow on the side of the road. I'm seven, eight years old. Yeah. And then Clady put her arm around me and she looked down and she said, Laws, Laws, Jabo, you has a sweet, sweet heart. <laughs> she told me I had a sweet heart now. <laughs> you do. Well, I'm, I'm 62 years old and I'm a man and I don't like to think I have the sweet, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I have a sweet, sweet heart, but you know, I remembered her saying that. 
It's the heart of the Lord you have. No, it's, it's when That's a child so hears something good yeah. about herself or about himself. When somebody cares enough and pays enough attention to a child That's right. that they can say to that child, you, you know, you, you're very nice and helpful. You have a sweet heart. Uh, you're polite. Uh, you're, th you're thoughtful. You're, you're bright. And yet, how many children today, they don't have anybody in their life. No, that's right. They don't have anybody in their life to give them an encouraging word. Yeah. And an encouraging word is life. It's and like sometimes it's mothers like, don't say encouraging yeah. words. They're so worn out and tired. They're always on the back of the kid, you know, and telling them this, and you're going to be like your dad, and you're this and the, all of that. Negative, negative, negative. And they believe that because mama said it. Well, the children, we talk about ADD, attention deficit disorder, that they can't pay attention in a classroom. But it's really because no one has paid enough attention into them. No one has noticed them yeah. and, and focused on them and given them undivided attention. And that's really what Common Grace is all about. We provide attention for kids who need it in the public schools. Wonderful. So. I know that with autistic children, you have to give them an extra, extra mm -hmm. lot of attention, but they do come out of it. Well, even normal kids, you know, if they're in a classroom with 31 other students, they're just one of many. Or if they're in a large family or a soccer team with 16 other players, it's very rare nowadays for children to be able to sit down with a grandma or a grandpa or an auntie or an uncle and just have time. Somebody told me that adults spell love, L-O-V-E, but kids, they spell love, T-I-M-E. Isn't yeah. that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. And if you will give the gift of time and attention right. to children, you really will see them flourish. I think, too, that we're missing out on having dinner time together that I had when I was a kid. Dinner time. My mother would call me, and everybody met at the table at dinner time. There was discussion. You'll find that f families like Kennedy's, I don't want to lift them up, but she was a good, <coughs> Mrs. Kennedy was a good, uh, Rose Kennedy, a Catholic. But they took time with their meals. Everybody had to be there at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And they talked politics, and they talked what they believed, and then that family went on to greater things because of that. So we're missing that with our families. The kids are off to ballet. They're off to uh, whatever that is, you know, mm -hmm. King Kung Fu, whatever, <laughs> King Tut, whatever. And they, uh, <laughs> I like to call my husband King Tut and my dog King Mutt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke, <laughs> family joke. Anyway, uh, just don't make a mistake and, and mix up the names. <laughs> no, no, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> I can't. But I'm glad that you are then going forth and you're touching and teaching and looking and smiling and the warmth of the Lord is coming out, and we all need to be doing that. Yeah. Because you've had uncommon grace from God. He's saved us and filled us with, our, with his spirit so we can afford to give out. The remarkable thing is that the public elementary schools have put out the welcome mat for Common Grace. Wonderful. And so we can recruit volunteers from local churches oh. and train them and do thorough background checks and then have these teams of volunteers go right into the public schools not to teach religion yeah. and not to confuse the issues of church and state, yeah. but to spend one hour a week with one child, giving that child attention and making that little boy the, the center of their world Wonderful for that, for that one hour, and that's what Common Grace does. They used to have a program where the fathers back in my days went into the school and they talked all about what their job was, what they did in their job, how they loved their oh, job. We don't do find that, that and uh -huh. mothers too, yeah. what they were doing, you know, but we have come to the materialistic mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. and we've left out the deep roots of the foundation of why we're here for one another and I love it what you're doing tell us a little bit more we've got a couple more minutes this is a magnet it's on the side of my car I just peeled it peeled it off the side of my car but I wanted to show the logo of common grace because it's so simple 
and I think so powerful. What do you, what do you see when you look I at that? I see a, ch a mother giving a child a drink of living water, is there what I'd like to say. There you go, an adult boosting a child up for a drink of water, and how many hundreds of times have we done that? But actually, all it's meant to be is just a simple act of kindness. Yeah. And when I was a, at a church, I was the pastor for outreach and missions in a church in Kaimaki. Yeah. We got to know the principal at the public school just down the street. And so we went, the senior pastor and I, to offer our services and our help and our encouragement to the school. We said, what does this school need? We thought she'd ask us to paint a building or do landscaping or something. And she said, do you have any retired people at your church who could just come to our campus and spend time with our lonely children? Be a grandma and grandpa. And when I heard that word, lonely children, oh. I just got chicken skin because I thought, really, that was God whispering to me that there are lonely children in the public elementary schools. We have wonderful, warm people in our churches. Mm -hmm. And if we could match them up, that's what Common Grace does. It, it matches a church with a school and an adult with a child. I had heard once that they had a program. They wanted to have grandmothers and little kids come in at the same time, and also animals. Oh, that that's good. They are good with one another. We've gotten away from the good old-fashioned medicine of mm -hmm. Jesus and his love and his care and his good food. He ate fish, and I'm sure he ate a lot of good stuff in the Bible there it talks about. I know Oprah Winfrey did a, a, a thing one time where one good deed, she said, just do one good deed today, and it it flourishes. You do one good deed. You let somebody go by in your car. That's one good deed, you know, <laughs> instead of you forcing your way. One good deed, then someone will do another good deed and another good deed, and it just, it just rolls. Right. It gets on the roll. And so that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We can do that with our own neighbors. Babysit. Oh, yeah. Take some cookies over. Take some warm soup over mm -hmm. when they're feeling bum and down. Mm -hmm. That is common grace there and you don't ask for anything back just here taste the soup how good it is and then you live it That's you live that in your house try not to scream and yell and try to keep your dog off their lawn and you'll do all right okay <laughs> i've had people call me uh, uh, complaining about their neighbors okay we've got two minutes and what would you sum up again let's sum up october 21st October 21st. Call. Call 398 Obey or the number is 398 6239 for more information regarding our upcoming conference. October 21st at the Blaisdell Cocky Room. And uh, the theme of the conference is Empowering the Saints. So we need to get together so we can get a rolling for 2007 to our mega conference in 2007. And it's going to be great, and I'm going to try to talk only 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I'll try to be a good girl. Okay. I don't usually come out and talk. I just walk, and I don't <laughs> talk. But uh, only on my own show. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming, Karen. Thank the Lord you. bless you and keep you and continue to make his face shine upon you. And dear doctor, what would you say your last word? Call us. October is Spinal Health Awareness Month, okay. so I'm sure we have a, a great introduction to... Call Dr. Bruce Wong. And what would you say, Jay, because we've got only a minute? I would say if you would like to help a child one-on-one, -on -one, you can't do it as an individual, but as a team from your church, find four or more others and get in touch with us, and we'll hook you up with the nearby public elementary school and the next time you see a child don't ignore that child give them a word of praise and encouragement and smile at a child That's right. yes. we're almost all through I thank you Deborah for your beautiful dance it really moved and touched my heart and I hope your heart has been moved and touched by the Spirit of God eat right sleep right diet right do the whole thing right okay and I'll try to too all right God bless you thank you for joining us today be healed in every way we pray. Bye-bye now.